Hello and welcome to this kit review for the new Warmaster Titan for Adeptus Titanicus. So I was lucky enough to be sent one of the uh, pre-release models and you can see there how I painted it as a uh, Legio Griffonicus or War Griffin's uh, Titan. Now I've had quite a few questions uh, based you know, on uh, me showing these photos um, and I'm going to give you a few of my thoughts on the model as well. Here you can see uh, how I had it um, kind of like built but not really stuck together properly so if you look carefully you can see little bits of uh, blue tack and yes it is white it's white blue tack um it holding bits of the model together so a gentle breeze will send this falling to pieces but um it gives you a good idea of what the model looked like before it was painted some really nice uh little details on so just as we're coming around now you can see the uh, the butt cannon um <laughs> interesting little detail and you can see as well at the top there there's a little bridge and this that can be um, extended as well so when you're putting it together you'll notice that uh, the layer underneath the bridge also has the grating on for walking on uh, so if you wanted and you wanted to convert it uh, you can actually um, have it built with the, the bridge extended um, not much good for a, a wargaming piece but like if you want to do a diorama or something like that uh, would be pretty cool I think. Um, you can also notice that the head that is on it at the moment is different to the one at the beginning of the video. Uh, the model does come with three heads um, and you know you're free to, to pick between them. Uh, my preference was the, the first one that was painted. I have painted this head as well uh, and you'll see that later on in the video. Um, Although I feel this head probably is more suited to something like the Legio Mortis. It's more like a skull type shape, so, you know, a bit more evil looking. Um, other things on the kit. So uh, quite a lot of people have asked about the weapons, uh, the shoulder mounted weapons. So you can see here coming around at the moment, there's a melt cannon. And on the other side, I've got a turbo laser destructor. Um, you do get uh, pairs for these. So there's two of each weapon. Um, you also get the Vulcan Mega Bolters, um, missile launchers, flamers. Um, you basically you get the whole kit. <laughs> you know, all all your weapon options are available there. Um, apologies if I've got any of the names wrong. Uh, I'm more of a painter than a gamer, but uh, you know, I, I try and have a game whenever I can. So here's the um, the model. Uh, you know, painted, and uh, you can see a full 360 of it now. Uh, and you can see more clearly as well, like, so, as I mentioned, the uh, the armour on the uh, shoulders is upside down, or maybe I didn't mention, but <laughs> I was going to mention. So the, the armour on my, uh, well, not armour, it's kind of like the, the upper arm section. I uh, painted it upside down, um, and then I realised I painted it upside down uh, before I glued it on. But at that stage, I was, I was out of time, cause, so we have a deadline for getting these models completed. And... Um, I thought, well, I checked the look on the model and I think it, it didn't look too bad uh, with it, you know, the armor plates this way around. Uh, the only thing is, so you can see the weapon mounts above. Um, if you have the armor plates the correct way around, the little section goes up and covers the side. So there'd probably be some, you know, proper armor plating covering the, the side of the weapon. But what I did notice, however, is if you glue the armor plates on this way around, the weapon uh, can still rotate all the way to the side. Um, so if you want, and that's a thing to note as well, so all the weapons on this are built, they can all move. Uh, so things like the, um, the well, not the, the fixed mounts at the back, but the, like the point of defense, but these things on the shoulders, these little two guns next to the head, these can both uh, move up and down. Um, obviously the guns at the uh, on the shoulder mounts and on the carapace, the uh, AA mounts and the mortars, they can all rotate if you... Uh, don't glue them in but they can rotate so I've actually magnetized the the guns on the top as well um, I don't know why I did that but um, you know I had some spare magnets and I thought well why not um, and yes you do get uh, enough guns for four AA or four mortars or, or any combination that you want there's no rules for using them so you can go and do whatever you want with uh, those options on the knees as well so you can see there's a twin linked uh, last cannon and a little missile launcher on the knees you can um th there's enough for two of each so you can have two twin linked last cannons or two missile launchers uh, you know whatever your preference is and again there's no rules for those so um 
it's purely down to aesthetics, but it's pretty handy if you have multiple versions of the model on the table so you can make them look very different. Um, here you can see a little uh, size comparison between uh, a Reaver and uh, a little Knight. Um, so you can see that the Warmaster is a very large model. Um, quite a few people have asked for size, uh, comparing it to a Warhammer 40k Knight. And it's very comparable, um, you know, from in height wise, but when you actually look at the models together, the, the Warmaster is so much more detailed uh, and it, it's got a very different kind of build to it. So if you compared them together, the Warmaster sort of just looks much more impressive. Um, it, it looks obviously because they're, they're built at different scales. So with the, the extra detail and you know the complexity of the model, it just looks so much better. Um, also, not forgetting that the posability of the Warmaster is way way better than uh, a knight. Um, you know, technology has moved on quite a bit since the uh, the knight was done, so uh, it really shows now on the Warmaster. Speaking of the pose, um, I've had a lot of questions on that. How easy it was to pose the model like this, and the answer is uh, very easy. Um, anyone that's built one of the Warbringer Titans, uh, which was the uh, previous Titan for Adeptus Titanicus, um, you will have noticed that when you built it out the box, unless you made uh, an effort, it went together only in one pose, and that was a very straight-legged um, pose for it. And the same is true of the Warmaster. However, all you have to do is cut off these little tabs, and then you have full poseability. And the idea behind the tabs, I guess, is just so that it's very simple and straightforward for people to build. If it, you know you want to get straight into a game, you're not so bothered about the, you know, how you sticking the model together to look dynamic or anything. You just want the model there for gaming, um, and that makes it much quicker and easier to build something like that. Um, whereas if you cut these tabs off, you do have to dry fit. Um, this is the best model that I've built in terms of posability for options. I'm particularly impressed by the feet because the toes are all separate. Now anyone that's built a uh, a warlord and they want to do kind of like a dynamic pose on that will have discovered that the toes are all flat, they're all attached to the feet. So when you try and do any stepping sort of motions you have to either force the plastic by bending it which you're likely to crack it or you have to cut it all off and you know it's a lot of work. Uh, whereas this all the toes separate you can build it whatever pose you like in forms of stepping or you know just having it mold around scenery if you've got like rocks and things so the toes can be bending around rocks uh, it's fantastic that kind of thing also the pistons are much easier to do on this um, there's nothing really too complicated on the feet at all the only thing you have to be aware of are the armor plates on the feet um, and specifically the toes so the one little hiccup that I ran, ran in, into was the um, his left leg uh, on the back step so I have the toe bent quite far forwards um, and these little uh, armor plates on the toes uh, they kind of catch on the uh, the front plate uh, the shin plate uh, quite easily um, so the pose that I have it in is about the you know at the extreme end of how far forward you can have the foot bent now it's a fairly big step that he's taking so if you want like smaller steps or anything like that uh, it's not going to be a problem um, and also this is you know as far as the base goes um, for, for base size like you couldn't really get a bigger step on there without him going right over the edges of the base anyway so uh, there's no need really to try and do a bigger step than this but uh, you'd be better off doing a slightly smaller step because on that one toe a piece of armor I had to shave off the the trim at the side now you can't see it in any of the photos or anything because it actually clips in underneath the uh, the shin armor so you know you don't have to worry about it too much but just be aware that it does take a little bit more effort in the um, you know construction side of things uh, and you have to risk actually cutting details off the model so if you get it wrong you could be you know <laughs> in a having a pretty sad time about it for, you know for such an expensive model um, oh, other things. So the uh, the magnets on the arms, um, they are six millimeters by two millimeters. So it's important to note that these magnets are different sizes to all the other magnets that you've used for your uh, revert. So that 
on the reboot, it was just a carapace weapon that came with uh, magnet slots, and on the warlord um, that had shoulders and arm weapons, uh, and they were all uh, five by two, I think, or five by one. I can't remember, but <laughs> regardless, um, this has different size magnets. Uh, so I was a little bit frustrated by that. So in anticipation of getting this model, I uh, I bought some more uh, magnets that I could use on warlords and things. And then when I went to test fit them, they didn't fit. So I had to get some uh, quick uh, Amazon delivery 6x2 magnets. Um, but the bonus of that is that these hold really well. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, you need two magnets for each weapon. There's a slot on the top and the bottom. Uh, it makes the connection really strong as well. Um, yeah, uh, and the the bonus of this as well is it just means that you can move the weapons around as well. So I just like to keep my weapons movable. Uh, there's no real need for it in game terms, but it does. Uh, you know, it means you can change the pose slightly, things like that. Um, I can also, uh, with the way the model's built, I can move my arms upwards and downwards. So on the pivot point, um, they do move. And the nice thing uh, about this kit, for some reason, is when I, that there's just enough gap. Um, so that when you move the weapons it doesn't rub the paint off so I can uh, move my weapons around without you know damaging all the, the nice paint work that I've done um, and as I said as well uh, I also magnetize the uh, the weapons on top of the carapace so the AA mounts and the uh, the artillery um, and that also again allows me to just move them around a bit uh, someone asked if uh, you can use the uh, warbringer AA mounts on this because they are different shapes. So this has uh, like over and under barrels, whereas the uh, the Warbringer I think has side by side. Uh, they're slightly different shape. I haven't checked to see if the actual um, you know whole body of the gun will fit on this, um, but the the magnet mounts are the same size. So I'm assuming that uh, the guns will be interchangeable and if you want you can put the uh, artillery you know the, the mortars onto uh, a warbringer if you're if you want and uh, it's something that i'm going, actually going to do as well because i have uh, some more warbringers to build um and i think it just you know changes the profile a little bit of the model makes it a, a bit more interesting um oh uh, people asked about uh the the heads um in comparison to uh, other heads so you've probably seen a few photos uh, pop up while this has been rotating and uh, I tested some different head combinations on it so you probably saw uh, a warhound head on there um, I actually think it looks quite cool it's got a very tiny head um, but uh, it just seemed to, to fit quite nicely um, probably not something you want to do for gaming though like I did a few stupid combinations you saw a warhound with the alternate head on uh, the model as well um, that obviously looks ridiculous but you know <laughs> it shows you the different scale in heads um, I will say that the uh, so some people wanted to use different uh, some of the warlord heads on the warmaster um, the warlord heads are uh, significantly smaller but that's not to say they look awful um, I have got another photo coming up with uh, one of the wallet heads uh, on the model um, and I think you can probably just about get away with it what you can't do is use the uh, the warmaster heads on a warlord they just look too big um, uh, and kind of awkward uh, having said that uh, this is this isn't something I've tried but I'm gonna like I have ordered myself another warmaster um, kind of like a glutton for punishment um, because this was horrible to uh, paint for the deadline because of the amount of trim. Now you can probably just see looking at the you know the video at the moment as it rotates around there are miles and miles and miles of trim on this and I stupidly you know painted all the rivets and things on it um, but getting back to the heads um, so one thing that I'm going to do on the second uh, Warmaster is um, test fit the head from uh, 40k Knight uh, because the model is very similar in height to uh, a 40k Knight um, that the scale of the heads should hopefully be pretty similar uh, I don't think I've got a spare one though so that's one thing I've got to um, 
uh, go and find. But um, when that does happen, uh, I'll probably um, be doing a video on how to paint um, uh, Lee J. Mortis uh, Warmaster Titan with a converted head. Um, the only thing I would also say is if you're going to do something like that, is that again because the scales are different, and I already mentioned about the amount of detail on the Warmaster in comparison to a 40k knight, is you probably will have to convert the head a little bit. Uh, you, you'll probably have to put some extra rivets on uh, because you will notice that the rivets are much larger and further spaced apart on a 40k knight in comparison to this. Um, and all sorts of just you know small details like that so you know just keep that, that in mind uh, when swapping heads between the different scales of models uh, because it just helps keep everything in you know looking correct without standing out too much on the model so uh, other things people have asked me uh, the uh, the magnets on the uh, they call them the armpit <laughs> weapons it's not really armpit it's uh, the shoulders but um, so where I have the uh, the melter and the turbo laser people have asked me if they can magnetize those weapons um, it shouldn't be too hard to magnetize them however they do not have uh, magnet holes they have a rectangular push fit um, you know connections uh, all you just have to do is drill a little hole and stick in some magnets I'd say something like uh, three or four millimeters Probably close three millimeters is probably around about the, the right sort of size magnets to, to fit in there. Um, just be aware that you know you get the that magnet size. You need to get a drill bit that's the same uh, diameter uh, to fit the magnets in. Uh, make your life a little bit easier. Um, I personally am not too so I always magnetize everything um, purely just so you can move the the model around. I don't actually bother swapping weapons out. So um, if it's not something that allows extra movement on a model uh, you, you know I just glue it in um, on to uh, what the model comes with in the box uh, it, so it comes in on four sprues uh, the sprues are laid out really nicely so in future kits if they do do any um, and I'm really hoping they do uh, things like the uh, the head and weapons are all on separate sprues so uh, hopefully in the future we'll get some uh, alternate weapons um, and then you'll be able to have some really big battles uh, with some, some stupid points limits <laughs> uh, because if you're having multiple ones of these on the uh, the battlefield you've uh, definitely used up some points um, the sprues themselves are very tightly packed uh, I should probably say this is it looks a very complex kit. When I first opened this, um, I was quite taken aback with how tightly crammed uh, onto the sprues uh, all the pieces were. So there are no really big parts. Everything is, um, you know, they've really crammed everything they could onto these sprues. Uh, it's, it's quite impressive, but it is very daunting as well because you realize you've got a lot of work cut out for, for building this model. And it does take a long time to build. Uh, if you're interested in what the uh, the sprues look like, I think they're up now on the, the Games Workshop website. Um, other things in the box, uh, it comes with cards for all the weapons, uh, which includes the uh, the carapace, um, revelator, rocket launcher, um, you know the shoulder uh, cannons, um, the arm weapons, and it has enough uh, cards for you know all the the combinations, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it does have its uh, terminal card as well. It's uh, an A4 piece of card and it's the thin card, so it's not hole punched or anything like that. Um, but it just means you know they're a bit smaller, so you, you have more space on your table for gaming, uh, especially when you're get, getting up to using things like this with uh, lots of points. You'll be using you know quite a few titans probably. So uh, the the big old thick card they it took a lot of space. Uh, personally, I'm hoping. That Games Workshop doing like an official um, app or something for uh, tablets uh, just to keep track of these things, so I don't have to use all the uh, the card everywhere. But uh, there are some uh, non-official ones as well that I've uh, still got to try out yet. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's about it really. Um, it, it is a fantastic model. Uh, I think it's my favorite kit uh as i said for you know just building you know incredibly well designed lots of fantastic details and things like that um but as i said it, it is a lot of work as well but anyway i hope you enjoyed this uh 
this kit review. Um, if you have any other questions or anything, then you know, put them down below, and I'll uh, get back to you when I can. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.